Angels, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with part two of my October wrap up for 2024. I read a total of 29 books this month. I filmed a like mid month wrap up because I had already read 10 books in October and it was like the 11th or 12th. So I figured to make life easier for myself, I would film a mid month wrap up. But then your girl procrastinated filming part two and part three of October. So we're here now. And these are the next eight books if you want to hear the first 10 books that I read. Then go check out the mid-month wrap-up. Honestly, I had such a good reading month in October. Like, I had a lot of five stars or 4.5 stars, so I'm not mad about this whole wrap-up. But I feel like I should probably stop yapping and just tell you about the book. So without further ado, let us get started. The first three books that I'm going to talk about are all part of the same trilogy. It is The Nevernight Chronicle by Jay Kristoff. So the first book is Nevernight, the second book is God's Grave, and the third book is Dark Dawn. I'm only going to hold up the first book because holding up all three of them is real heavy because these books are a little bit chonky. This whole trilogy follows Mio Covera. In this first book, she is 16 years old and she is joining the Red Church, which is a school for assassins. She begins training to partake in these trials to best the other students in order to become one of the four blades that serves the Lady of Blessed Murder. If she succeeds in becoming one of the blades, she will be able to avenge the death of her family with the help of her shadow friend, Mr. Kindly. So I actually read this first book back in 2020 and I put off reading these other two books for so long because I was just intimidated because I read this and I found the like footnotes to be a little bit hard to read but as I went on it became easier but this time around I listened to the audiobook version and I highly 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 recommend going that route with this story because the footnotes are woven into the story seamlessly so it almost feels like the footnotes is the narrator breaking the fourth wall a little bit which personally I thought was a lot of fun. This whole trilogy is full of so many characters that I deeply fell in love with. I have two favorite characters of the trilogy as a whole. The first one being Mia. I just think she is so snarky and bitchy and I loved watching her grow throughout the entire trilogy from yes a little baby assassin but turning into like a full-blown assassin by the end of it. And then my second favorite is Mr. Kindly. He is... Mia's like shadow passenger and I absolutely love the banter between the two of them. I don't want to talk too much about the two other books in the series because I feel like it would spoil it but I will say that the series as a whole is extremely gory and violent and if that's not your cup of tea you will probably hate these books but I personally absolutely adored them. They are probably one of my favorite series of all time now. Highly recommend listening to the audiobook if you haven't but overall I gave all three of these books a five out of five. If I could give more stars, I would. The next book that I read is All's Fair in Love and War. This is by Virginia Heath and I gave this one a 4.5 out of five stars. So this one follows Naval Captain Henry Kincaid. He is unexpectedly left with his sister's three children and their unruly dog and he quickly realizes that he is probably going to be needing a little bit of help with these hooligans. So he travels to Miss Pretense's school for girls and he asks for an emergency governess. Georgina Rowe is hired. She doesn't necessarily see eye to eye with the captain on the way that she is going to educate these children, but as she spends more time with him, he grows on her and she grows on him and they start to fall in love. I thought that this one was a lot of fun. I will say that it was a little bit repetitive. There is a lot of the miscommunication trope, but I had fun with it nonetheless. I really loved Georgie. I think that the relationship that she built with the children was the best part of the book. I think that she was just so caring and loving and patient with these kids, which I think it was definitely what they needed. I think that the slow burn romance between Georgie and Henry was really well done. I really liked the banter that they had with each other. I thought it was a lot of fun watching them grow closer. I also absolutely loved how grumpy Henry was with literally everything, but as soon as those kids came into the picture, he would completely melt. The children were definitely the highlight of the story for me. I just thought they were so cute and mischievous. There's also a dog who was a big goofball, so anything with a dog I'm going to love. I do recommend this book if you are a fan of The Sound of Music. It was giving those vibes, but personally I had a lot of fun with it. I give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next up I have Practical Rules for Cursed Witches. This is by Kayla Cottenham and this is another one I gave 5 out of 5 stars. 
In this world, in order to keep their magic, witches must perform the calling within six months. All of the females in Delilah's family are cursed with never finding true love, so Delilah decides that her calling is going to be breaking her family's curse. Unfortunately, Delilah's calling is hijacked by Kieran Palumbra. He enacts the rules of morality, which means that anybody who is suffering from a deadly curse can ask for a witch's assistance. The Palumbras are a very wealthy family, but in order to keep that wealth going, every generation a set of twins is born, and they essentially drain the life from one another. So Delilah and Kieran set off to find Kieran's twin sister, Briar, in order to stop the curse from killing Kieran. I absolutely loved this story. I really fell in love with these characters. I was invested in it right from the very first chapter. All of the characters have such distinct personalities. You couldn't help but root for every single one of them. I absolutely love Delilah as a main character. I think she was so funny and witty and fiercely protective. She's also a fellow tall girly. She's six feet tall. Same here. So any tall representation, I'm gonna gobble up. Briar was so grumpy. She is definitely the grump to Delilah's sunshine, but I loved watching her and Delilah grow closer together. I loved the banter between them. I also just think that Kieran is such a sweet little cinnamon roll and I wanted to protect him at all costs. I think that the found family aspect of this book was the best part of it. I really enjoyed the plot and how engaging it was. I was so invested in trying to break both of the curses. I really do wish that there was a, another book coming following these characters because I don't want it to be a standalone because I don't want to be done with them, but I digress. I don't think there is, but this one was definitely a five out of five for me. I haven't heard anybody talking about it either, which is a heartbreak for me because I just want to talk to everybody about it. Definitely, definitely recommend picking this one up. It is so underrated in my opinion. Next up, we have The New Mother by Nora Murphy. This is one that I gave four out of five stars. It follows Natalie Fanning, who is a new mother, and she just wants to get every everything perfect. Her baby ends up developing colic and she is finding it very difficult to develop a routine and that's when her neighbor Paul shows up who has a child of his own and he offers a little bit of help. But all is not what it seems and Natalie is not quite sure what is real and what is in her head and it's kind of the story of that. This is a very, very slow burn story. It is told in dual point of view and broken up into four separate parts. I think that Natalie's point of view became very repetitive very quickly, but I did really love Paul's point of view and I do wish that we had gotten a little bit more of that. All of these characters are so insanely flawed. I loved following them, but this is advertised as a thriller and I don't think that I would classify it as a thriller. I think it's more of a like domestic drama focusing on manipulation and the life of a new mother. It was a lot of Natalie just going through her day-to-day -day life battling postpartum depression and a colicky baby. I also think that the ending was a little bit rushed. I wish that it had been expanded a little bit more. Like maybe if we had gotten a point of view from Paul at the very end with his thoughts on how everything transgressed, but I digress. Uh, we don't always get what we want, but I did really enjoy this. I give it a four out of five stars. Next up, I read I Dreamed of Falling by Julia Dahl, and I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This one follows a reporter named Roman, whose longtime girlfriend and mother of his four-year-old child is found dead at the bottom of the ravine. As things start coming out about Ashley, Roman quickly realizes that he doesn't really know much about his girlfriend or the things that she's been getting up to, so he decides that he is going to figure out what actually killed her, and it's the story of that. This one an okay story. I don't think it would be anything memorable for me in the long term, but it is very slow paced. The chapters are very short though, which kept my attention. The book covers a lot of topics like open relationships, drug use, bad parenting, depression, things along those lines. There's also a lot of talk about COVID. So if COVID is not your cup of tea and you don't want to hear about it anymore, then yeah, I would probably skip this one. There were quite a few suspects, but it does get whittled down by the end. Every single one of the characters are extremely flawed. And when I say flawed, I mean like flawed, but... I was invested enough that I wanted to know what happened to Ashley, so I kept reading. I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And then the last book that I'm going to talk about is Fall For Him by Andy Burke. This is another one that I gave 5 out of 5 stars. It is the companion novel to Fly With Me, which I read earlier this year and absolutely loved it. I did not know 
that it was a companion novel so when I started seeing nods to that first book I got so excited. But this one follows Dylan who ends up falling through the roof of his very hot neighbor Derek's ceiling because his apartment had a flood so they decide that they are going to move in together while the apartment is getting fixed and things happen from there. I love Andy Burke's writing style. I think that it is so easy to read and just so addictive. When they put out more more books I am going to gobble every single one of them up. I'm really hoping that they stay writing these interconnected series because I loved seeing all the characters from before in this one. You can't help but fall in love with her characters and root for them. The romance was so stinking good. I thought the banter was so much fun. I loved seeing these two go from enemies to friends to something a little bit more and then like full-blown more. I also think that the depiction of grief, anxiety, and ADHD was so well done. I also really liked the conversations about medication that came up. There is also a dog and like I said before, any book with a dog I'm going to absolutely love and this dog in particular was the biggest goof ever. So 10 out of 10, 5 out of 5 stars. Definitely recommend The Companion Fly With Me as well. Read that one first then read this one. You can read both as standalones but it is more fun seeing those little nods to the first book if you ask me but overall five out of five baby all right everybody so those were the next eight books that i read for the month of october the first 10 are in the mid-month wrap-up eight here eight is coming very shortly for a total of 29 books in total for the month of october let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them and i will see you all in my next video goodbye